Hello and welcome to The Safety Artisan, where you will find professional, pragmatic and impartial advice on all things system safety and related. Uh, and so today, which is the 1st of March 2020, uh, we're going to be talking about, let me just find it for you, we're going to be talking about system requirements hazard analysis and this is part of our series on mill standard 882 e 882 echo and this one is task 203 so task 203 in the mill standard and it's a very widely used uh, system safety engineering standard um, found and its influence is found in many places, not just on military procurement programs. So we're going to take a look at this task, which is very important, possibly, possibly the most important task of all, as we'll see. So we're going to talk about the purpose of the task, uh, which is, you know, word for word from the task description itself. Uh, we're going to talk about in the task description the three aims of this task which is to determine or work out requirements uh, incorporate them and then assess the compliance of the system with those requirements because of course it may not be uh, you know a simple read across then there's just the uh, that actually the task description we've got six slides on that that's that's most of the task um, then we've just got one slide on contracting which if you've seen any of the others in this series will seem very familiar. We've got a little bit of a chat about section 4.2 from the standard and some commentary uh, and the reason for that will become clear. So let's crack on. So task 203.1, the purpose of task 203 as it says is to perform and document a system requirements hazard analysis or SRHA and as we've already said the purpose of this is to determine the design requirements. OK, so we've got to focus on design um, rather than buying stuff off the shelf. Uh, we'll talk about the implications of that a little bit later. Um, so uh, design requirements to eliminate or reduce uh, hazards and risks. Incorporate those requirements into, it says, into the documentation. But actually, what it should say is incorporate um you know risk reduction measures measures pardon me into the system itself and then document it and then finally to assess compliance of the system with these requirements now um and then it says the srha addresses all life cycle phases so it's not just meant for to for you to think about certain phases of the program what are the requirements through life for the system and in all modes whether it's uh, in, in operation whether it's in maintenance or refit whether it's being uh, repaired or disposed of whatever it might be so first of six slides on the task description and i'm using more than one color because uh, there's some quite a lot of important points packed quite tightly together in this description so we're assuming that the contractor performs and documents this SRHA. In reality, the customer needs to do a lot of work here before it ever gets near a contractor. More on that later. So we need to desert, determine system design requirements to eliminate hazards or reduce associated risks. So two things here, by identifying applicable policies, regulations and standards, etc. More on that later and analyzing identified hazards so um, so requirements to actually perform the analysis as well as to simply just state um, uh, we want you know we want the system to do this and not to do that so we need to put some requirements in to say uh, here's you know here's what we want analyzed maybe to what degree and why is always helpful so breaking those 
breaking those two requirements down. So part A. So we're going to we're going to identify applicable requirements by reviewing uh, military and industry standards and specs, historical documentation um, of systems that are similar or you know with system that we're, we're replacing perhaps. Look at um, it's assumed that the depart the U.S. Department of Defense is the customer, ultimate customer. So the ultimate customer's requirements, including whatever they've said about standard ways of, of mitigating certain common risks. Uh, system performance spec. So there's there's your functional performance spec or whatever you want to call it. Uh, other system design requirements and documents. Okay, bit of a catch-all there and applicable federal, military, state, and local regulations. So this is a US standard. It's a federated system, much like Australia, uh, or indeed lots of modern states, even the UK. There are variations in law across, uh, you know, across England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. They're not great, but they do exist. Uh, and in the US and Australia, those differences are greater and it says applicable executive orders okay well executive orders are, are they're not law but they're they're the um what the executive arm of the u.s government has issued and international agreements okay so a lot of words in there have a look at the different statements that are you know in the in white blue and yellow basically from international agreements right down to whatever requirements may be applicable they all need to be looked at uh, and 